Hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, whatever you think of Zack Snyder or his films, he was the original director of the Justice League movie. Which brings us to today's topic, the controversial release of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Released in March 2021, Zack Snyder's Justice League follows many of the beats of the theatrical cut, but also veers off in places. The basic story is the same, Steppenwolf comes to Earth to retrieve the Mother Boxes and herald the coming of Darkseid, and only Earth's greatest heroes can stop him. But Earth's greatest hero, Superman, is dead! Weighing in at just over four hours, and scoring considerably better on Rotten Tomatoes, this is the movie that Snyder wanted to make. But before we get to the movie itself, we should spend a little time talking about how it came to be. I don't know how many people know this, but it's safe to say that production of the Justice League movie didn't exactly go like clockwork. Snyder's original vision was a five-picture story arc, building around the Nightmare sequence in Dawn of Justice. However, Dawn of Justice had received decidedly negative reviews, and the prospect of a Justice League movie was much less certain because of this. Studio and director nervousness led to rewrites, and with the death of Snyder's daughter in March 2017, Joss Whedon was brought in to reshoot much of the film, which he'd originally been hired to rewrite. The resulting movie, while critically panned, is still one that had much going for it, at least in my opinion. However, almost as soon as the theatrical cut was released, voices online began to wonder about the Snyder cut and what Snyder had originally envisioned. These curiosities sparked a movement to get Snyder's cut released to the public, which ran for four years and eventually resulted in additional shooting and post-production, even in the early waves of the COVID-19 pandemic. The resulting Snyder Cut movie was released in early 2021 to HBO Max, the Warner streaming platform. And while there were accusations of toxic behaviour by the movement, and news in July of 2022 that many of the online interactions may have been automated, it's still quite the achievement that a bunch of dedicated fans managed to see the completion of Zack Snyder's take on Earth's Greatest Heroes. The Snyder Cut follows the basic plot of the theatrical movie, being that Bruce Wayne and Diana of Themyscira recruit metahumans into an alliance whose main goal is to stop the Conqueror Steppenwolf from uniting the three mother boxes and terraforming Earth into a hellish horror. Realising precisely how outmatched they are, Bruce Wayne, Batman, discusses resurrecting Superman, who had controversially died at the end of Dawn of Justice. After a troubled reawakening, the Man of Steel is finally returned to his senses and makes his appearance as Steppenwolf is defeated and hope reigns once more. All of which was told in two hours the studio-mandated runtime by Joss Whedon. So being that this movie is four hours long, what is it exactly that is filling out, or perhaps padding out, the runtime? The Snyder Cut opens with the death scream of Superman resonating across the world and reawakening the dormant mother boxes, which had been left behind by Steppenwolf 5,000 years ago. Also, Whedon took the delete hammer to several subplots and characters from this Snyder Cut, such as Ryan Choi, Eleanor, Cyborg's mother, and even the Martian Manhunter himself, who is revealed here to have been masquerading as General Swanick. Controversially, the Nightmare timeline, being that it was to have been a big part of the original five film arc, does appear again in this movie. What doesn't appear is the horrible CGI lip on Henry Cavill that caused so much consternation in the theatrical cut. For those who don't know the story, Cavill was shooting another movie at the time, in which he had to have a moustache, and was contractually obliged not to shave it off. 
Consequently, when asked to return for reshoots to Justice League, the moustache had to be removed in post-production. However, due to a truncated schedule, the moustache removal was... lacking. Let's put it politely. Being that none of Whedon's footage is used in the Snyder Cut, there's no moustache to remove. The most striking difference, however, has nothing to do with story or runtime. Eagle-eyed viewers may have already noticed, but Zack Snyder's Justice League is not shot in the industry standard 2.4 to 1 widescreen ratio, but in the classic 4-3 ratio of 35mm film. Snyder's reasonings for this have to do with the verticality of the upstanding hero and the classic square panel of the comic book. The last big change to note is the completely rewritten score by Tom JXL Holkenborg, who had originally been hired to score the theatrical cut, but was replaced with Danny Elfman when Whedon took over the director's chair. Fun fact, Holkenborg's score for the Snyder Cut is officially the longest full musical score for a feature film, beating former record holder Ben Hur by almost a full hour. So even with these changes and extensions, is it the same film? Moreover, is it still worthy of my house of love? I remember saying that Snyder was a bad choice to direct these movies. Perhaps I was mistaken. Remember though, that he chose to have Superman kill at the end of Man of Steel, that he chose to make Dawn of Justice a clash between Batman and Superman, but remember also that in the face of an unimaginable world conqueror, Zack Snyder chose to embrace that these heroes could unite and save the world. But onto the film itself. And there is a lot less bickering and joking around here, though everyone seems to have the same arc. Heroes standing alone, working alone, and then uniting in the face of the oncoming threat. Barry's arc, however, is somewhat different. The hero that worships the rumours, the whispers, that needs friends to find a new, better life, and then he finds it, and becomes the linchpin that undoes the end of the world. And all of the secondary characters and world building and even more fridged parents do help to flesh out our heroes, at a cost of runtime. And yes, at a backside numbing 243 minutes this is no summer blockbuster, though it does put me in mind more of the rainy Spider-Man movies, in the way that it paces the action scenes with character moments. So is it better than the theatrical cut? Controversially, I think that it is. Not for the added F-bombs, of which I counted at least three, or for added bloodstains, or Wonder Woman beheading Steppenwolf at the climax, and perhaps not because there's roughly twice as much movie here. It's because this movie, love it or hate it, and however it got to our screens, and into our hands, feels a lot less like a churned out product, and a lot more like a labour of love. And the effects work is worlds ahead of the theatrical, probably because of the added time. And Holkenborg's completely rewritten score, along with the rest of the sound design, added a much needed extra dimension to proceedings. But again, this is a four hour movie. A modern epic, if only in length. And not everyone will have the patience for that, especially considering the theatrical cut. And there are a few all new duff lines in here, and Amber Heard's cod British accent, which she rightfully ditched for the Aquaman movie, did catch my ear. Overall then, whatever you think of Zack Snyder, whatever you think of the Snyderverse, do keep in mind that the original plan was to increase lightness with each movie, and I can at least see hints of that in here. And don't judge this movie on the movements that demanded it release, or the reputation of its director, actors or other behind the scenes drama. Make up your own mind about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Because I have. And actually, I'm going to put it, and the theatrical cut both, into my house of love. I've been Funky Monkey, wishing you good days and great entertainment. So long, folks!
Hey folks, Funky again. If you like the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!